Uh, Steve Weiss from NFL Media is back with us. Uh, been a long time, brother. Speaking a long time. You have been standing by patiently. You are short on time. So I will make this question quick and get right to it. Say, bro, who's actually good in the NFL? Like, who do you believe? <laughs> the Tennessee Titans. I mean, look, teams like the Buccaneers, the Packers, the Rams, the Bills, they're, they're going to get it together. But w this is something like I, I haven't seen in all my years, you know, covering the NFL where, you know, you usually have one weekend where things are kind of haphazard, smattering of things. But some of the blowouts, especially of some of the supposed elite teams that is going on, is is really different. And you don't know if these are flaws being exposed, guys having a bad week or two. But to me, the one consistent team is the Titans. And you know why? They run the football, they stop the run, and they play bully ball. Will it work when we get to January? Who knows? I don't see why it shouldn't. But you're seeing some of the finesse teams right now get Molly Watt from time to time where some of the guys oh, who play some old school football oh, just get boy. down in the dirt and they win what they have to do. Yeah, that's right. You just tee Michael uh, yeah, Holly I, up. I know I, I know where this yeah, is going. Yeah, like the Rams, for example. Just go ahead. Just go. You just, just continue. You're talking Bruh, about the Steve, Rams, right? I took it, the on, embodiment I took it on the of what chin. you just said. Steve, I took it Michael on the Smith chin has been yesterday. hyping him up. The same way the Rams took it on the chin Monday night, like I, because I, I mean, I'm, I'm a believer. I got uh, the sparkly, the shiny objects. Michael, Michael broke Love me it. down yesterday. The sparkly, shiny objects got me to thinking that this team had what it took to come out of the NFC. And the reason I speak in the past tense, Steve, because of the opposite of what you just talked about. Like the last two games, bro, they got punked. That play with George Kittle drove Von Miller into the ground is basically what's happened to the Rams the last two games. Is that who they are? Yeah, I mean, can they can they yeah. be tougher, or is that or are they just not a tough team? That's who they are, right? Go ahead, Steve. No, no, I, they, they can be tougher. I mean, look, you know, the people are saying the Rams are like your old typical dome team, right? Where they have to get a lead and can't <laughs> can't play from behind, but get a lead, turn the pass rushers loose, and, and then they get after it. But as I said yesterday, you know, with everyone saying that the Rams are showing up to F one fifty showcases and Ferraris, they can muscle up. You know, it's Steve. look. First off, the 49ers have owned them. Right, they've won five yeah, straight. Kyle Shanahan yeah. is in Sean McVay's head, but the lack of toughness on the defense really just kind of stunned me. I mean, bad fits some of the physicality. And for Tennessee, everyone talks about how they just bullied them for four quarters. They bullied them for about two or three series. And of course, Matthew Stafford through the interceptions. That's the big issue. Matthew Stafford is throwing four interceptions, two pick sixes in back to back games. That's been more of the issue. And them just coming out and getting housed, even though it got out of control Monday night. So if they've got to get dirty, you know, we'll see. They have a bye this week, and they come out against Green Bay, who's showing more and more that they're starting to play some of that Titans football with A.J. Dillon, the big boy from Boston College, you know, teeing them up and knocking people down. And that defense is being more physical, too. I think that's when we're going to see the real identity of the Rams, where they've got all this time to get it together, and they're getting ready to play a physical team at Lambeau if they can go in there and go toe to toe, okay, then maybe everything that, that Mike's talking about them not being able to, to get in the F50 Mudden uh, competition, F150 Mudden competition with the other pickup trucks, maybe that'll hold true. Steve, I, I've known you for a long time, man. I don't know if I've ever told you this before. I love you, man. I love you. I, mean, <laughs> I love you I love too, you. brother. I like, love you, both like, you guys. I, I, I love you. Like you are saying all the stuff you you mentioned the dome. I've been talking about the dome team. That's why Mike started laughing. And now, now Trotter set us straight. Have that Trotter so told long. me the last time he was on, I said, "Yeah, you know, how does this dome?" Because I was clowning uh, so far as saying, "How does this dome have lightning problems?" All this stuff. He said, "It's not a dome. Can you? Is it a dome or not?" It's not a dome. a dome. It's not a no, dome. No, it's, it's, so it's, it's it? got it's got a it's got a cover on. Okay, so imagine sitting in in Michael Smith's beautiful backyard, right? And he's yep, got all right. these nice furniture and fire pits and things and right in the it. middle. And then he's got a beautiful fire pergola pit. over the top. That's what it's like. It's got, it's, it's called, they call it a canopy because the sides are open. Like there's fresh air and stuff going from side to side and end zone to end zone. So they call it a canopy. You know, that that's kind of, so you can see on oh, the, on the is. open okay. sides yeah, all yeah. around. So it's all just right. kind of got that. And then of it's course, you know, it's, it's dome-ish. And I got to tell you, uh, like the new Silk Sonic song, that thing is as fly as me. That is that stadium is it. When you go when you go into that thing with the California breezes flowing through, 
and everything else sure. that comes with it. When they say it is state of the art, that is an understatement. Wow. Well, look. So we, we gonna we yeah. we gonna be out there. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just gonna say uh, it, all the things you said about you know the Tennessee Titans and you know running the ball, stopping the run, and all this. Can't you say the same thing about the Packers? I mean, they've only really been humiliated in one game, one game, and that was that that yeah. first game of the year. The opener. So yeah. right. And they lost. They lost to Kansas City. No shame in that. 13-7. Good game. Without the quarterback. Which Jordan Love was playing quarterback. Isn't, right. Yeah. Right. Isn't Green Bay? Wouldn't you say Green Bay is the class of the uh, uh, of the NFC, if not the league? I, I would say so right now. Again, because one, their defense is so much better than what we thought. Everyone thought because Joe Barry had failed at two other stops as DC that he was going to mess this thing up. And early on, it kind of looked like that was the case. But now they have found their groove. They are absolutely physical. They got corners who can cover. And again, that running game now with AJ Dillon, he is a 240-pound dude with like. Earl Campbell sized thighs. Look at the way he is mashing. That offensive line is mashing. It's setting up the play action pass game. You know, they really found things, you know, a, a couple of weeks ago when they played, you know, at Arizona with some of that run game with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's what they're going to have to need when they get into that cold weather. And look, that's what Tampa Bay found late last season when they had Fournette and Ronald Jones going. That always ends up being the key to things. And look, don't sleep. Even though the record doesn't says it, look what the Patriots are doing. They are starting yep. to mash on defense. They are starting to mash on offense. That is one of the teams we really need to pay attention to coming out of the AFC. Uh, so last question for you, man, and uh, we'll see the Patriots, of course, uh, against the Falcons tomorrow night. But I say, you know, most people's game of the week, Cowboys at Chiefs, two teams that we think we know who they are. I mean, we think the Cowboys are legit. The the dud against the Broncos, notwithstanding, the Chiefs' recent body of work in recent years suggests that if they haven't already figured it out, that at Raiders game, that they will figure it out. What do you expect from this game, and, and and who do you expect to make that statement, that definitive statement in this game, that hey, we are the team that needs to be reckoned with? Is it the Cowboys, or or do you expect the Chiefs to keep this thing rolling? Well, th that's a great question because I'm looking at this game like the Chiefs are McLovin walking into the liquor store, right? They're going to get carded <laughs> and they're going to convince the guy behind the counter that We're they're old really 21. Party? Right. That they're, they're, they're really 21. <laughs> right, exactly. So, you know, that's, you know, that's what I want to see from the Chiefs because Dallas is good, man. I mean, Dallas is legit. We talk about teams that can run the ball. They can throw the ball. And, and Dan Quinn is the coordinator – of the year, but he's gone down there and take, taking similar talent, move some pieces around. They add Micah Parsons, who's just, he's clearly the defensive rookie of the year at this point. And some of the things they've done with the secondary to let, you know, um, Trevon Diggs get all these interceptions and J Ron curse the safety is playing like Derwin James back there. Um, this is going to be a serious test for Kansas city. And if they put one on Dallas, then they're back. Okay. Everybody else strap in. I mean, that that's, that's what it is. Yeah, but Dallas, Dallas is real, man. I mean, Dallas is a real team. So they're 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 legitimate to be reckoned with. And I and I gotta tell you with Dak, and I've talked to people down there who who've been around, you know, some yeah. really great players in their coaching careers. They said, Dak, the leadership job he has done, everything he went through last year during COVID, you know, losing to family members, getting hurt, everything like that. He is he has put so much on him to our other mm. dudes right now. They would do they would do anything for him and he is playing lights wow. out and, and I think that is I a like huge that. huge statement as, as to why you know the Cowboys are doing it on both sides of the ball. I love that nugget man. Uh, you the real deal yourself. I love that take in general because I mean most people man would probably think that the Cowboys just given that they're you know, the Cowboys have more to prove against the Chiefs, but it sounds like the jury for you at least is the more Chiefs. out on the Chiefs than it is the Cowboys, man. That's great. Yeah. Great stuff as always, Steve Weiss. Appreciate you taking the Steve time, Weiss. brother. Thank you. We'll see you out My there. My brothers, love you guys, man. Love you guys. Love, love you too, too, man. See you in a couple months. All right, take care now. Hey, thanks for watching Brother From Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.